Hello everyone, welcome to the next chapter for this particular subject, Financial Accounting. This is chapter number 4, Source, Records and Books of Prime Entry. In this chapter, we are going to specifically learn about the types of business documentation, what are the books of prime entry and what is a customer and supplier accounts. We will be specifically talking about how a transaction is initiated in the books and what are the books or what are the documents that is starting phase of the uh, transaction where it gets recorded and how it goes through. In another chapter, chapter number 5 and 6, we are going to talk about how this transaction is going into various other books, right? From prime entry, it's going to go into ledger accounts, journals and it's going to go into ultimately your financial statements. So we are going to start with the baseline of how a transaction is initiated or recorded in the prime entry or in the books of initial entry. So before we go to the main topic for this particular chapter, let's try to understand what is a double entry bookkeeping. We will definitely learn this in the next chapter. We are going to learn it in a deeper way, but just summarizing what is a double entry bookkeeping and then from there we go into the source of records, prime of entry, etc. So what is a double entry bookkeeping? So let us look at here a double entry bookkeeping. So let us look at here. First, let us try to understand what is A. Let us say A is a business. And then there is someone called as P. A P is an accountant. Then there is someone called as Z and Z is an owner of the business. So what does Z do? Z will invest in the business and Z will hire an accountant and the accountant will kind of manage the business and this is the relationship. So let us say first, let us try to understand what happens in a business? So whenever there is a business, whenever there is business A, all the business will go through something called as transactions. So there could be transactions one which terms of sales, there could be where you have, a, have an expense, there could be where you purchase the product, purchase etc. So a business would go to multiple transactions, right? It goes through multiple transactions. Now, if you take all these transactions in the raw form, it would look like this. Let's say, for example, there is a date 21st December X7 um, with respect to stationary expense, dollar 10. And like that, in one year itself, like one year itself, there are 365 days and in 365 days, if there are at least 10 transactions per day, per day, then there would be total of 365 multiplied by 10, 3650 line items. So each line, if you add one transaction in one line and if you take 10 transactions that happens in one day and total there are 365 days, then there will be total 3650 items. Now, of course, there is no purpose and nobody can look at all these 3650 items in a short span of time. It is not possible. Until and unless what you do, until and unless you summarize. Now, how do you summarize? That is what you are going to learn in this chapter. Like how a transaction comes in, comes in and how the transaction goes into the books and how the books are creates into uh, you know ledger accounts and the ledger accounts goes to financial statements so whenever these transaction comes in there are let's say there are 3650 transactions that has gone through these 3650 transactions are entered whatever you have 3650 transactions are entered into the books are entered into the books and the books could be one 
which is the first entry of books and that is called as the prime entry. Then they are summarized further, summarized to ledgers and then further summarized to financial statements. So here, if you look at here from the transaction perspective, the business makes all these transactions. The business does all these transactions. The business goes through these transactions. And the owner cannot go through because as an owner, I've invested money in the business. So owner cannot go through all these transactions. So this is very impossible. It is quite impossible for him to go through all these transactions. So he wants to take decisions based on the transaction that happens in the business. So what happens? That's why he has hired an accountant who summarizes these transactions. Accountant. So owner hired an accountant who is knowledgeable, who is knowledgeable about these transactions, who knows these transactions and summarizes them into the prime entry, the ledger and ultimately prepares the financial statements. So the owner who has hired this accountant knows how, what he has to do with these transactions and he takes these transactions, the accountant takes these transactions and summarizes, creates a summary of them and prepares an ultimate statement or a report called as financial statements, which is the best form of summary. It is like reading a summary of the entire book. So entire 365,000 transactions, if you want to just read, understand what is the story behind a book, you just read the summary. So likewise, an owner who is now interested to know what is happening with the business, all he needs to look at is go through this financial statements, which summarizes for entire period for one year, 365 days of your profit or loss, statement of profit or loss and your lifetime, what is your assets or liability is taken into consideration, your assets and your liabilities. And that is what we are going to learn in detail in your financial statements. So accounting, whatever you learn in ACCA or be it any other accounting profession, what you are going to learn is how a business incurs these transactions, how you are going to record it in various books and summarize them and ultimately prepare a report which can be presented to the owner or any stakeholder for per se and the stakeholder or the owner can take a decision or financial decision on the business. And this is the base of your double entry system and this is where through where you're going to prepare or the accountant is going to use a strategy where he can take the transactions and put it into various books and the owner would be able to easily identify the financial statements. How the double entry system works, what are the mnemonics, we will learn it in the next chapter. Now let us try to understand how a transaction passes through what kind of documentations in a business and where it is finally summarized. Right? So let us take a quick example. Let us say that you are conducting or running a business and in your business you have incurred with a specific expense. Let us say for example a stationary expense. Now you bought what are stationary items? You bought uh, books, all right? You bought pens, you bought all other items for the company, etc. Now when you go and buy all these products, what do you get? You get something called as a documentation that is called as an invoice. Now this is an evidence to state that yes, the person who has purchased these items have incurred, have incurred a cost an expense and so for your business you purchased all these stationary items by giving out cash and uh, you got an invoice and you got the items in return. This is called as a transaction. Now this transaction can be evidenced using what the supporting documentation called as an invoice. 
Now, when you enter this transaction, you purchase the products in your business, you purchased stationary items. What you got? You incurred, you paid the money and you got all the stationary items. Now, the business doesn't know what you have purchased. You have paid some cash. You have purchased something, but they don't know what you have purchased. The business doesn't know. You need to tell the business what you have purchased. That's where you take a transaction which is raw in nature. Because if you just look at the transaction, you might not understand. Right? So to give you an example, on today's date, you went to stationery item shop and you purchased something. And you recorded that purchase something for stationery or you purchase something for this and that. You purchase something. That's it. Or you wrote you just paid cash expenses. That's it. So when someone is looking into this, when an owner is looking into that transaction which you have entered, he not know what exactly is this? What has happened? For that, where you are telling the owner or where you are telling the business what or why you have purchased these items or why you have incurred these transactions is called as book of prime entry. You take these transactions and you record it into your books of prime entry. The books of prime entry. So they are all categorized and, in, and entered into a books of prime entry. So how do I do that? What I do is I am a, you know, a business where I need a lot of stationary expense. So what I do, I keep a separate, let us say a book, a notebook where I write down what are the items that I purchased every month for stationary purposes. So I would say I would call it as a stationary book. Here I will record on so and so date. I will write okay on 15th September uh, October 2000 X1. Uh, I purchased five books, two pens for dollar twenty. This is the prime entry where you are summarizing if you have incurred a transaction you are summarizing into a small description stating what you have done and how much you have spent on what date so you have date description and the amount and this is the initial place where your transaction is goes into your transaction is raw in nature you are telling the business what you have incurred that transaction for and that is what is books of prime entry it is the initial place where you are telling the business what you have done with it. So this is the communication to the business. Initial communication to the, to the business. This is your raw data. And then all these books of prime entry, you, it will be summarized. Why it has to be summarized? Because if you look at every day, every month I, I go and buy these book items so there will be a lot of data now i cannot present everything to that uh, you know my owner stating that you know what i purchased today this date today this much amount today i spent this much amount today i spent this much. i cannot go and tell that so what do i do again i summarize it so that it can be presented to my owner in a very small or lesser time and every day if the owner wants to see what is the expense that i have spent for stationery he can open it and see okay you know what this is the expense he has spent so that's why you're summarizing it. So when you summarize, you the next thing that you do is you summarize it. Now what do you do to summarize it? You summarize it through something called as your nominal ledger or called as trial balance. How do you do that? I'll give you an example. Let us say that the same entry of 15th October, 15th October, you purchased five books, two pens with dollar twenty. Then you purchased on 20th October, you purchased six books and three pen, and that costed you around dollar thirty, etc. You add all the transactions that you have incurred in your in each from your books of prime entry. That is fifty. And this will be called as your total stationary expense. And when you summarize in your trial balance, 
when you summarize in your trial balance you're just gonna write that this is an account or this is a expense that you are incurring with a total amount that you have spent with dollar 50 in your trial balance you are not writing further details like your dates right or your details of the books etc you are just writing that similar transactions that i have incurred i have summarized them and i have we have incurred in total which are for dollar 50 so anybody let's say i am an owner of this company if i go and look at my trial balance and i see the stationery stationary expenses with with a dollar of 50 i would know that i was spent for something which is in relation to stationary and that is a purpose of summarization you are telling in a in a in a nutshell to your owner stating that what has happened with the business without giving further and much more details why because when there is only two or three entries it is easier to explain but what if there are thousand entries what if there are a million entries your owner cannot go and or stakeholder cannot go and look at all the details and say that yeah, this makes sense. He needs to get everything summarized. So once you have the summarized normal ledger, we further summarize it. Why? Because we as an accountant would know, yes, uh, when it comes to trial balance, what or how the trial balance looks like, etc. Or we come to know in nominal ledger how it comes to uh, how it is presented etc but remember one thing all your business uh, when you have a business and anybody who has a relationship with your business would be interested to know about your business let's say for example you i am running a business and i have multiple owners i have few people who have partnered with me and we have put the money together that I am running the business but they are all my partners when I am running the business I am the management I am the person the lead person who is running the business and I know end to end what is happening in my business but when I am running the business I am running with their money as well with my partners money as well they will also be interested to know what is happening with it and hence we need to prepare something in a very summarized manner to the owners stating what we are doing and how we are doing etc. Now what we are doing, how we are doing, we can write it, give a num narration. Right? We can say we are a business of uh, you know edutech or we are a fintech business, we are a manufacturing business, we are here, we are this, that etc. But how do you present the numbers? And when you are a business with millions of transactions, how do you summarize them? And that's where in accounting, we summarize it through something called as your financial statements. Where even a small expenses like stationary expense is summarized stating other expenses and created in a in a specific report and submit it to the owners for them to read through anybody who looks at the financial statements can understand how the business is doing without understanding the concepts of accounting and that is the beauty of financial statements it is a report where anybody can read anybody can anybody can read and understand and understand the finance of the company so that's why it is called as financial statements a statement that presents the finance of the company so hence financial statements which is the ultimate report that every company prepares and presents it to your shareholders or stakeholders and anybody who are invested in the company can understand how the company is doing and it is presented in a very simple way so that everybody can understand whether the company is a good company profit making company or company is a loss making company. However, to go through this financial statements, to ultimately taking a transaction and preparing through financial statements, that is where we as accountants 
or chartered accountants comes into the picture where we are the experts. We are like the doctors, doctors of transactions. Doctors do what? They diagnose, diagnose, they diagnose the patient, give them medicines and ultimately the patient either recovers or they don't recover. Ultimately, we as an accountant, we diagnose, diagnose each of the transaction. We give them various forms, we summarize them into various books and ultimately we present to the, in the financial statements, which helps the people who have invested in our business to take a decision. So financial statement will help the users to take decisions. So all this goes through what are the various types of documentation a transaction goes through. Before we go on to the topic of what these particular financial statements or how the transactions are going through, we need to understand what are the business types of documentations we have. So we will need to understand what are the types of documentations we have. So the number one that I would like to talk about is something called as a quotation. And it is very good that you learn all this now and understand them because you would, these are very frequent jargons that are words that are used in your financial accounting and it will be going through this, you will be able to easily understand what are they talking about when a question is asked and an information is given based on this particular documentation. So what is a quotation? Quotation is nothing but, uh, is, a, is a nothing but where you are mentioning or quoting what a quotation is nothing but it is a document that is sent to their customer by a company which mentions what is the price that they fix for the product that the customer has requested. So to give you an example, let's say you go to a supermarket and you take a product and you ask the counter, you go to the counter and you say, how much does this cost? And he is giving you a quotation then and there itself. He's saying that one unit of the product that you have taken cost $10. Now, what if I want 100 products? What if I'm a customer who wants 100 products? Definitely, if I'm purchasing more, I will ask for a discount. So I will say each product costs $10. If I'm buying 100, I can give it to you for $9.5. So a quotation is something that is, that is customized to the requirement of the customer, which includes the price of the product and the quantity of the product the customer is requesting for. So a quotation is nothing but it's a document sent to customers containing the price, quantity and any discounts etc. Okay. Good. So that is a quotation. So in which all types of transactions we will have a quotation? We will have a quotations in sales where we are selling a product to the customer. So we give a sales quotation. So there will be a sales quotation. And there will be a quotation in terms of purchases as well. So there will be a purchases quotation as well. The next type of document is called as orders. So what is an order? With an English meaning of order is to give a direction, to state something immediately and ask them to do. So you, you are going to ask them to do something. So an order, sales order or a purchase order is something that you are giving a direction or you are asking the company to say that I would like to purchase or I would like to buy or I would like to sell. So a sales order is an 
uh, documentation confirming the purchase or sale made for the specific quotation. So you are confirming confirming for the specific quotation that you have received you are confirming to the customer or uh, to the to your supplier or the customer is confirming to us stating that go ahead and sell me these products i agree to you so that is a sales order even in sales order similar to like a quotation would include your price your quantity etc it could also mention like when do they want the product to be delivered and all those stuff then the third documentation that you might listen to is goods dispatched or received note. So either a goods dispatch note or a goods received note. So I'll call it as goods dispatch note as GDN and goods received notes as GRN. So a goods dispatch note it's nothing but when you are making a sale, you are confirming that the goods have been sent out. So when you have a goods, when you have a product, the product is in the store. So let us say that right now online purchasing is very common. So when you buy something from Amazon, you make an order and you give that order to the Amazon. So that's a sales order. Whatever you see in the front end of Amazon is a quotation for one product, one quantity. They say the price is this much and you once you click on the order, you give a sales order saying the Amazon, please dispatch this product to me. And Amazon gives you a confirmation that the goods has been dispatched and that is called as a dispatch note. When the customer, when the company gives a confirmation stating that the goods have been sent from my warehouse, now it is going to reach you in so and so dates, it is called as a goods dispatch note. So goods dispatch notes are in terms of sale. Right, you as a company, your company is sending the good to customer. So, so that is about good dispatch note. So now, what is goods received note? So a good received note is confirmation that goods uh, we as a company have received the goods from our from our supplier so you purchased the product from the amazon and amazon sends you something called as goods dispatch note they say sending you the customer they are sending you stating that we have sent the product from our warehouse now what if you have you know uh, you have received the product and sometimes amazon gives you a call back and asking them can you please confirm whether you have received it how do you know that you give a signing authority earlier they used to be like they give you a, 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 a note stating that I confirm whether the goods have been received and you give a sign right now when you purchase through Amazon you are receiving an OTP right so this one time password so this one time password only when you give the one time password it confirms that you have received the product so a goods received note is a confirmation that is given by the customer to the supplier. It is given by you to the Amazon stating that you have received the product. So it is from a business perspective, it is when you from a purchase standpoint where you are giving the company is conforming to the supplier that you have received the product that the product have been received. All right. So what is the next step? So once the product has been received and the products has been done, then there is something called as an invoice, which states that the product has been sold or purchased by a concerned person. So it is an ultimate evidence st 
stating that the transaction has taken place which could be either a sale or a purchase. So you are confirming when you as a company is giving an invoice say when you make a sale that is called as sales invoice and in sales invoice you are confirming to the company you are confirming to the customer that we have sold you so and so product for so and so price. When you purchase, you get a purchase. When you purchase something, it is the opposite way. You get uh, given by, so sales invoice is given by the company to customer. Then when you make a purchase, your supplier confirms to you stating that they have sold you so and so products. And here the supplier gives it to the company. Or the business so that's an invoice confirming that the transaction has happened with so and so date and so and so price etc now let us say that you go through you entered into Amazon you like the shoe and you purchased the shoe and uh, they gave you the good dispatch note and you confirmed your goods received note through your OTP and all those stuff and you got an invoice now you wore the shoe and you didn't like it or the shoe was damaged. What do you do? You buy bought a product but the product was damaged or the product you did not like. So what do you do? You try to return it. And there could be cases where we as a purchaser, when we are purchasing, we are, the business is purchasing, we could give back the product to the supplier because either they are damaged or they don't suit or they were not according to the order or they, they send you incorrect product. At the same time, there could be a customer who could send back the product to us because either they didn't like or they couldn't, you know, that was not according to their requirement or the product was damaged. So there could be cases where the goods which are in place could be returned. So goods returned. So a goods returned either to the vendor or to the company. So either goods is returned by the company to the supplier or returned by the by the customer to the company. So we'll divide this into two parts where the goods are returned, goods returned by, first let us talk about by the company to their supplier. So which means you purchase the product and returned it and returned. When you do that, you get something from the supplier called as a debit note. Right? So you, you issue something to the supplier stating that you request to supplier to accept the return. That is called as a debit note where we as a company are giving to the supplier asking them to accept this particular return. So this is given by the company to supplier. There is something called as a credit note which is happens in a case where when you make a sale and the customer returns the product. So you made a sale but the customer returned the product. So it is an opposite to that of an invoice where you are stating that when you issue a credit note you are confirming that the sale 
is negated or the sale is cancelled and when you do that the credit note you call it the credit note will be called as a can also be called as a a negative invoice so a credit note can be specifically called as a negative invoice is where you are confirming or you are stating that the goods have been returned and we are cancelling the sale that we have made the next concept is called as when you make a payment so when you buy something from amazon you tend to make a cash on delivery or you tend to make a sale via your online transaction through debit card credit card or or even bank uh, you know bank remittances etc when you are making a sale when a company makes a sale company gets what company receives cash and company sells the goods or gives away the goods so when company receives the cash they get a cash receipt they get a cash receipt they issue a receipt confirming the payment received yeah now when it comes to the purchase when it comes to purchase what we do we request for something called as a remittance advice we request for a remittance advice which details out we give an advice to the suppliers detailing which invoices are to be paid paid and and which are offsetted against the credit note so we request when they come ka supplier what he does he gives an advice stating that please make the payment and that is for the purchases but when it comes to receipt we get a recipient we get a receipt confirmation from our bank stating that we received the amount and we give them a receipt stating that we have received the payment this is the confirmation that we issue when we give when we get a payment from the customer but when we are making a payment to the supplier the supplier issues an advice stating that please make the payment we'll be requesting your document stating or giving you an email communication or something in, in in sort of a communication asking you to make the payment now let us uh, try to summarize everything into a flow chart so that you can easily understand how they are interlinked and how they the start and end so let us look at here let us first talk about a purchase transaction so what is a purchase transaction where you are you as a company buying product from a supplier supplier so let us say here the name the your company name is company is called as a and uh the company name is a and the supplier name is supplier name is b so what happens is that we as a company we might reach out to the supplier asking them the value of the product and how much 
how much quantity we want based on our requirement we reach out to the supplier so a reaches out will reach out to b right asking for asking for a quotation Now, based on the discussions with A, A and B together, B will send a quotation to A. So, this is called as quotation. So, B will send a quotation to A. And based on the quotation, A gives an order and that is called as a purchase order they look go through the quotation and they initiate they say go ahead and they will say give the purchase order to b and b once they have sent out the products they will issue a good dispatch note gdn to a And once the uh, good dispatch note A uh, gets the product or receives the product, A will issue A will issue to be something called as GRN. A will issue to be goods received note. And once the goods received note is in, uh, taken care, what will B does? B will issue issue and purchase invoice to A. Purchase invoice to A. And then A, once they receive the purchase invoice, once they receive the invoice, they make a payment so what does a do a gives a payment with the advice so remittance advice confirming that the payment has been made to b and b will ultimately give it to a the receipt stating that they have received the so this is how various documents for a purchase transaction takes place. So since you have understood how the purchase transaction works through where we have A is the company and B is the supplier and A asks for a quotation and B gives a purchase order, uh, B gives a quotation to the company and uh, A gives a purchase order to B and B issues a good dispatch note once they sell the product and A gives a goods received note to B and B issues a purchase invoice to A and A gives a remittance advice stating that they have made the payment, confirming that they have made the payment and B gives back stating that the payment has been received. Now what happens, let us try to understand in a sales transaction. So let us say the same opposite, how a sales transaction, how it goes through. So here A is same, A is the company, but instead of B, who's the supplier, we can take C who's the customer. So instead of we company going to the customer, most of the cases the customer will come to the company asking for the details. So C will reach out to A, uh, will reach out to A asking, asking for products and A gives a sales quotation again a quotation to whom to C and C does what C uh, and C does what C gives a sales order based on the 
quotation. So C will gives a sales order to whom? To A. And A does what? A, once they dispatch the product, they issue a GDN, goods dispatch note to C. And C will confirm the dispatch note by issuing a GRN, goods received note to A. And based on the goods received note, A will issue a will issue an invoice, a sales invoice to C. And once the C has made the payment, C will give the remittance advice stating that I have transferred the amount to A. And once we receive, the company receives the remittance advice a will a will issue a receipt to c so if you look at the above if you compare both almost this the data or the documents are the same it's just that who initiates first in terms of a sales and purchase is what it makes a difference so when it comes to a sale, the customer reaches out to us and we do all the part of goods dispatch note, uh, giving an invoice, uh, you know, confirming the, uh, you know, confirming the receipt, etc. And giving the quotation, etc. But in case of purchases, it's the opposite way. We reach out to the supplier and supplier gives us the quotation. So uh, we give the sale purchase order and we issue, uh, you know, we as a company issues GRN, etc. GDN, uh, GRN, etc. Right. So the difference is such that depending upon what type of transaction, you just need to understand the documentation and how it is getting affected. So let's talk a bit more on an invoice. So what all invoices consist of? So invoice consists firstly, what is invoice? An invoice is a confirmation that is given by, that is a confirmation that is given by a business to their customers stating that they have sold the product so and so product with so much quantity to you. So what does an invoice show, right? So what does an invoice show? So an invoice ultimately is a evidence for a transaction. So invoice is an evidence for a transaction confirming that the product has been sold or purchased by the company. Now what does an invoice consist of? What does what does an invoice consist of? An invoice definitely consists of first the name and address of both the parties, the seller as well as the purchaser. So the name and address of seller and as well as purchaser. It includes the date, the date of the sale, on which date the sale has been made. It includes what items, a description, description of what is being sold. It includes a description of what is being sold. It includes the next thing, option D, it includes the quantity and price the quantity and price of items sold the quantity and price of the item sold it includes details of discount 
details of discount then it also includes amount total amount to be paid or received including the tax details so we will we have a separate chapter for this and we will talk about the tax part of we need to account in a in a separate session so your total amount is nothing but your quantity multiplied by price so if you order one product you will be one into quant price which is ten dollars if you order ten products with a price of ten dollars then it will be ten into ten hundred if you order hundred products it will be hundred into ten thousand etc so the total amount is the total of the quantity multiplied by the price for that particular product then it includes the due date of payment sometimes when you have to make the payment it also would include like details like discounts any other discounts available discounts that could be available uh, if you make the payment early etc and we will go through that in some time so these are something called as an invoice now what why do you need an invoice why what are the uses why do you need an invoice invoice could be used for multiple purposes it could be used for one to request a copy copy to customer as a request for payment so you are telling the customer that you know we have made the sale now it's your duty to make the payment it could be given to the accounts department who can make the payment you can make the payment accounts department to make the payment and an evidence as an evidence as i said to show the transaction has taken place it could also be used to send to the warehouse warehouse asking to dispatch the product it could also be used to match certain things so to match with your sales order sales order and and it could be used as a documentation by the sales department so these are the uses of a goods uh, a invoice so various kinds of uses right now let us try to now understand if there is an invoice what is the opposite of an invoice an uninvoice right it is nothing but a a credit note so let us try to understand what is a credit note now for that we'll take an example right let us say that there is a company abc which gave an invoice okay which issued an invoice for 20 plates so abc company issued an invoice for 20 plates right and uh the price was the price was yeah the price was total 62 dollars 62.10 dollars but when they send this invoice they accidentally accidentally typed as dollar 
So instead of a price of one uh, sixty-two dollars, they typed it as one sixty-two. So definitely, the shop has overcharging the its customer by dollar hundred. So there is an overcharge of dollar hundred. Nothing but one sixty-two minus sixty-two. So what should ABC company do? So what should ABC company do now? What should they do? So the the answer is very simple. The answer is that the ABC company should send send a credit note a credit note to its customer. For dollar hundred, right? But it is a separate document. So a credit note is nothing but it is a separate document from the invoice. Why do you are sending it a separate document? Because invoice is something that you have already sent out. Now you cannot return it. You cannot say, okay, you know what? I'll take the invoice. I cancel everything because it has already gone out. You have recorded it in your books. When you invoice a book, it has already gone out. Now, how will you confirm or how will you tell the business that it was incorrectly typed? So you send another document above this invoice, stating that, stating that, stating that there was an error, and you don't need to make the payment for this pay error. right so here a credit note what you will do you give a separate invoice which will be distinguished that distinguishes distinct distinguishes the invoice the invoice but but it will contain but with a specific number called as a credit note number cn i put it as cn a credit note number so it's a separate invoice so let's say you receive an invoice with 20 plates of dollar 162 now this is an error so now for this error to be made you issue a credit note to the customer which will the credit note will also contain similar informations to the uh, uh, like an invoice where the customer name details will be mentioned so you will say for 20 plates with an invoice number you will mention the invoice number here stating let us say the invoice number was 1 say invoice number 1 Let's say the credit note number is one, uh, one two, for example, stating dollar hundred. So ultimately, if you remove hundred from one sixty two, the net effect will be dollar sixty two point one zero, and that is the purpose of a credit note, where you are stating to your customer that you don't need to pay the payment what is mentioned in the invoice. Rather, you can reduce the amount. And pay the remaining amount, right? Is that clear? Now let's now let us go through the third topic, which is books of prime entry. What are books of prime entry? So now let us go to the next uh, topic, which is books of prime entry. So books of prime entry. What are books of prime entry? The books of prime entry is the first entry where uh, the transactions are recorded in the business. so as mentioned here a books of prime entry are the first transactions first place where the transactions are entered into the business what are the various books of prime entry you have you have cash book you have cash book where you will be uh, recording you have cash book where you will be recording the sales 
the, or receipts that you incur or you receive from a cash transaction or the payments that you make. So a cash book would include all kinds of transactions where cash comes into the business. It could be in terms of sales or it could be in terms of purchases where the cash outflows goes happens or it could be cases of where any other cash income comes in. So it consists of cash book would consist of all the transactions that is in relation to the receipts or payments. Then there is something called as sales book, a sales book which would include only credit sales. Why it does not include cash sales? Because cash sales is included in your cash book. So if cash sales is included in your cash book, then your credit sales will be included in your sales book. But what is a credit sale? Credit sale is where you are dispatching the product and you're telling to the customer that I have sent you the product. You start utilize using the product, but you can make the payment maybe in a month's time. That is called as credit sales. Then there is something called as purchase day book. Purchase day book. So a purchase day book consists of only credit purchases. And why does it not consist cash purchases? Because cash purchases goes through your payments in your cash book. So your cash purchases are included in your cash book and hence your credit purchases are included in your purchase day book. So what are credit purchases? Credit purchases are where you are purchasing from the supplier and the supplier tells you, you can pay me later. Now there is something called as petty cash book. So cash book will include bigger transactions like huge volume or with, with bigger amounts. Petty cash book are your day to day small, small transactions, which could be like minimum of $1, $2 to a maximum of $10, $100, etc. So which is, these are small transactions, small cash transactions. So petty cash book would include small cash transactions. So what about journal book? Your journal book consists of any adjustments and errors. So anything that you post as an adjustment to correct your transactions are, will consist in your journal book. Anything that you need to adjust. So these are the various books of prime entry where you incur a transaction, you get an invoice from the from your supplier that goes into a purchase day book with, an, with certain information that will be presented in the book. In addition to these books of prime entry, there are two where other books which is called as a sales book, returns book and a purchase return book. And a sales return and purchase return are where you are returning the goods to the customer or the supplier but they are credit. So you purchased a product from your supplier on credit, but you did not like it. So you're returning it. So that gets recorded in the purchase return book. You, the customer purchased a product from you and they returned it back to you. And that is, that is included in your sales return day book. So always focus in your exam focus point. It is mentioned very clearly that many of the students were able to answer these questions very easily. So it is good that this week, this particular information is quite easy to understand and much easy to answer as well and easier questions will be asked. So the next topic let's first go through is what are sales and purchase day books. So as I mentioned, the first thing is sales day book. A sales day book is the say book which of prime entry consisting only for credit sales. So how does it look like? Let's go through here. So a sales day book lists all the invoices. So a sales day book is a summary which lists down all the invoices sent out to the customer for each of the day. So every day, whatever invoice you send, let it be 10, 20, 100, you mention all the invoice number and date and what is the name of the customer. So a sales day book would typically look like this. It consists a date, an invoice number, a customer name and the amount. So if you look at here each day, whatever the invoice that you are generating, you are mentioning it. And the total 
amount of sales they book which is adding up all these invoices goes to your sales account this is your ledger and we will talk about that in some time when we learn the next chapter chapter number five so all your sales day book consists of various invoices that you have generated and on which specific date who is your customer and the amount that they you have sold for they could also have additional information many of the businesses would like to have more information and analyze it in deeper way some of the information just wants in a summary but some of the businesses want to analyze further and they might have various product so hence for that there will be a separation of your sales day book right so to give you an example let us take the case where the business sells two products boots as well as shoes so boots as well as shoes boots as well as shoes and and the sales they are are mentioning in the sales day book it might look like this where there will be a date with an invoice number so the date same customer j spalding as above the total amount was 200 but it was relating to the boots to another customer mcgregor the total amount was 400 but it was relating to the shoes so a sales day book might summarize all of the products together and mention the total amount or they could also differentiate it or divide it to the products that they incur and that is called as a sales day book so that this helps what is the purpose of this this helps the business to analyze how much of sales of this 1300 how much came from boat and how much came from boot and how much came from sales so if you look at here out of 1300 600 came from boat boot and 700 came from shoe sales so by anal by helping them to analyze this the if the sales day book is in a much more detail it will be easier for them to make a lot of decisions so next is what is a purchase day book so similar to a sales day book where you are recording the sales transaction purchase day book is a prime entry for your credit purchases and the information is almost same instead of the customer name it will be the supplier name so it will have the date the supplier invoice number that the supplier has given and instead of the customer's name you will have the supplier name and the amount will also be mentioned and the total amount will go to your something called as purchases account and as i said what is a purchases account how this total amount is recorded we'll discuss that in the next chapter so if they want to have a further further details further analysis they can do that as well so your sales day book might also include purchase day book might also include additional details like not just the date and the serial number of the supplier but also what kind of purchases they made or what kind of expenses they incurred out of the 200 it pertained to 200 for electricity for what butler they spent it for an inventory and fairco they spent it for 200 so that all the total amount they know for what purpose they spent it and this helps them to make a decision if they feel that you know 800 is too much they'll be able to analyze on which data or which particular item am i spending more so that is about purchase day book so now let's go through a purchase return and sales return book so as the name says sales return book and purchase return book just mentions which customer has has returned the product mentioning the date so a sales return book will include the credit note that you have issued the company have issued stating to which customer that we have issued and a, and a purchase day book which would include the credit note that we have received from the customer so sales return book would include credit notes that you have raised as a company purchase return book would include the credit notes we have received from the suppliers 
and it include the credit date book the return books would include the date and the customer and the goods and what uh, and what is the amount so here if you see the customer whom we have issued the credit note and what we have issued it for the books boots the product as well So then what is a cash book? What is a cash book? Let us go through what is a cash book. So as the name says cash book is for something that is in relation to the cash, the money that you pay or receive. So cash book is a prime entry for your cash receipts and payments that you have made including the actual physical cash that you sent out or that is sent through the bank. So cash always consists of Cash always consists of whatever that you pay through the actual cash that you give out as a physical cash or something that you pay through as a uh, as through a, your bank. So what does cash book consist of? I will divide this is divided into two portions. One is a receipt. So let's first look at receipts. What do they include? They definitely would include the date and narrative. Narrative could be anything. It could be a sale transaction where someone have purchased, given us the actual cash and made a sale. Instead of a credit sale, it could be based on actual cash. So here, F blogs, total amount 4000 has invested the capital. So this F blocks is an owner. So owner who has invested capital in the business. So we received, we received Cash, the company received cash from the owner and here the details are mentioned of which account it goes to. If you look at the next transaction J Spalding where we received 200, this is in relation to a credit sale. So when we make a credit sale, we are sending the products to the customer and the customer has to pay it back to us but he might pay it maybe one month time and after one month when he makes the payment, the payment is included in your cash book as a receipt. The payment will be included in your cash book as a receipt. So that is how your cash book consists of. And with your cash book you will have, you will get to know certain informations like why we have received the cash, who has sent us the cash, the name of the person and when they have sent us the money. So why we have received it? It could be because of capital sales or receivable who has sent us through when we are recording through the name a person looking into the cash book would know who has sent us and on what date they have sent us and how much they have sent us the money straight opposite of this is where you have a payments book a payments book where we have a cash book for payments which would include the dates and whom we have sent the payments to. So cash receipt consists of who, from whom we have received the money. Payments consist of to whom we have sent the money. So if the total amount 350, it's related to the payables. So Manly and Co are our supplier. So we were supposed to pay back to the supplier and we received 350, we paid $350 to the supplier after on 2nd of January 2007. So a cash book with payments would consist of why we have made the payment, for what purpose, consist from to whom we have made, to whom we have made the payments, to whom we have made the payments, to whom we have made the payment and it also consists the date at which we have made the payment. This is how we record the cash book. Please know that we will study further you will understand how a transaction is recorded. This is where you are just noting down in a in a in your notebook on what date, what have we done, and that's it. And definitely, there are much more to this where there will be called as something called as journal, where you are going to record the transactions through something called as a journal, and we will learn that in shortly.